Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about turkey fryers that use oil to fry a turkey. And we'd like to thank AF Palancar 5 for a five-star rating and review on Podcast Guru. Book 18 is back from the editor, and we'll be publishing it on Amazon in the next week or so, and we'll let you know when you can get a free download. Woohoo! In other news, Lutron will be having some holiday sales this year on some of their products. And they asked us to share it with our listeners. Right through November 30th, Lutron's original Caseta wireless dimmer kits will be 20% off with their retailers including Amazon, Lowe's, Home Depot, and Best Buy. From November 23rd through the 29th, Lutron's Diva Smart starter kit will be 16% off with their retailers including Amazon, Lowe's, Home Depot, and Best Buy. And their outdoor smart plug virtual bundle will be 20% off exclusively online at Home Depot and Amazon.com. That's great. In the 1970s, portable crawfish cookers became popular in Louisiana, and it consisted of a propane burner with a stand for a large pot that they would fill with water. In 1982, one of the first articles was written about some chefs that filled a crawfish cooker with oil and they said they developed a new way to fry a whole turkey. Hmm. So turkey fryers are actually a pretty recent cooking method. Does it make anybody else sad that 1982 was 41 years ago? <laughs> so relatively recent cooking method. <laughs> yeah. What is a turkey fryer? A turkey fryer that uses oil has a large pot, a stand with a propane burner, and a gas hose with a regulator that connects to a 20-pound propane tank. You get a perforated basket or a stand to hold the turkey, a thermometer for the oil, and many will come with a lifting hook that looks like an upside-down hanger to lift the basket or the stand with. Hmm. Some fryers come with extra pots for fish and other food and a marinade injector, so you can add marinades into the meat under the skin, and it looks like a large syringe. Are there turkey fryers that don't use oil? Yeah, there are infrared turkey fryers that use radiant heat or electric to cook the turkey. And maybe we'll do an episode about those next year. Okay. What other foods can you cook in a turkey fryer? You can fry a chicken, like put a whole chicken in there. You can fry fish. You can just use the pot to make a large amount of soup, or you can fill it with water and boil seafood like lobster or crab. Cool. So it's kind of versatile. What are some features to look for in a turkey fryer? Compare the capacity and the pot size so you're matching the turkey size that you're regularly going to be frying. The most common size I saw was a 30-quart pot, and this will fit a 14 to 18-pound turkey. But check the specifications for the model you're looking at, because it can vary depending on the shape of the pot and the design. Okay. A 60-quart pot will hold an 18 to 22-pound turkey, and Butterball says, purchase your turkey based on 1.5 pounds of turkey per person. So a 15-pound turkey will feed about 10 people. Hmm. What other accessories does it come with, like a marinade injector, an oil thermometer, or pots for other food? What material is the pot made from, stainless steel or aluminum? Some reviewers said that stainless steel pots are more durable and easier to clean. Compare the warranty. Check for safety features, like a sensor for high heat. If the oil gets too hot, a heat sensor will shut off the burner. And check the type on your model Some of the sensors I saw, the pot needs to be touching the sensor for it to work. Okay. Some of the turkey fryers have an oil-draining basket. That means that the basket that holds the turkey has some type of support. So when you lift it out of the pot or lift it up from the pot, you can let it set on the top so it drains the excess oil, Hmm. which is convenient. Some turkey fryers have electric ignition, so you just push a button to start it, but you need batteries for those. Some need to be lit with a long match, like a fireplace match, or they'll come with a match holder, so you can use a regular match. What type of oil do you use in a turkey fryer? 
You want an oil with a high smoke point, which means it will withstand a high temperature while you're frying food. Okay. What are the different types of oils? Bayou Classic recommends peanut oil for their fryers. Refined peanut oil has a high smoke point around 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Refined canola oil has a smoke point of 400 to 430 degrees Fahrenheit. Sunflower oil has a smoke point around 440 degrees Fahrenheit, and all three of those have a mild flavor. Mm -hmm. One article I read said the smoke point is the temperature when the oil starts to break down. Heating past the smoke point can cause the oil to taste burnt or bitter, and the oil vapor can become flammable and a fire hazard. It also creates harmful compounds that aren't healthy to ingest. Okay. Using refined canola or peanut oil works best for deep frying. They have a high smoke point. What is refined? Refined means it's been processed to remove impurities, which increases the shelf life. It increases the smoke point, and it gives a mild flavor. Okay. What do you do with the oil after you're done cooking? The National Turkey Federation... Is that a real thing? ...says oil can be reused a couple of times. The Texas Peanut Producers Board... Again, is that real? (laughs) They say peanut oil can be used three or four times for frying a turkey. When it turns dark in color or smells rancid, it's time to throw it out or recycle it. And you can check online for a recycler in your area, or you can go to earth911.com to find somebody who recycles in your area. And that's E-A-R-T-H, the numbers, 911.com. Spruce Eats recommends after you've let your oil completely cool, strain it through a cheesecloth to remove food particles, and then put it back in the original container if it can be sealed. Okay. Strained oil should keep for around six months. Make sure you don't pour large amounts of oil down any drains because it can clog your pipes. The National Turkey Federation, they recommend putting used oil in a fridge or a freezer between uses. Okay. How do you thaw a turkey? Butterball says to thaw a frozen turkey, put it breast side up in the original wrapper on a tray in the fridge and allow at least one day of thawing for every four pounds of turkey. Hmm. And once the turkey's thawed, you want to cook it within four days. Okay. To thaw it quickly, keep the turkey in the original unopened wrapper and place it in a container so it can be completely covered with cold water. Then change that water every 30 minutes. It's going to take about 30 minutes per pound of turkey to thaw. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. What temperature does the oil have to be at to deep fry a turkey? You want the oil to be 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Although when you put the turkey in, it's going to reduce the temperature. So a couple chefs recommend getting the oil up to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, then lower it into the pot because it's going to cool off the oil when you put it into the pot then get it back to 350 degrees Fahrenheit to fry it. Cooking at a lower temperature can result in a greasy turkey. (laughs) How do you use a turkey fryer? You want to light the burner and adjust the flame from high to low before each use to confirm that it's working properly and you have a good flame. The flame should be primarily blue in color with the tip of the flame yellow in color. If the flame is primarily yellow, Adjust the air damper until the flame is primarily blue for the best heat. Hmm. But check your manual for their recommendations. And then turn off the flame until you're ready to cook the turkey. The National Turkey Federation recommends using a candy thermometer to monitor the oil temperature and a meat thermometer for the turkey. What is a candy thermometer? It's a very accurate thermometer that has a high temperature range. Hmm. And it has a long probe. Okay. Check the manual for your turkey fryer model so you don't exceed the turkey size recommended for your pot and have a fire extinguisher and pot holders nearby. You want to place the fryer on a level area that's covered with grass or dirt or a solid, non-flammable surface. Don't place your fryer on wood or any surface that's combustible. Don't fry on concrete. The oil can stain it. Hmm. To determine how much oil you're going to need, remove any wrappings, the neck, giblets, or anything else in the turkey. Place the turkey in the basket or rack and put it in the pot. Then you want to add water until it's one to two inches above the turkey. And the pot should be big enough so the oil level is going to be three to five inches from the top. 
Hmm. Once you fill it with water and it's just over the turkey, remove the turkey and use a ruler to measure the distance from the top or place a piece of tape at the top of the water so you know how much oil you're going to need. Right. Then you're going to pour out the water and dry the pot thoroughly. Okay. Another way you can measure the oil is if your thermometer has a clip that you clip on the top of the pot and the thermometer can slide up and down on that clip, mm -hmm. you can put your turkey in, cover it with water, and then slide your thermometer so the tip of the thermometer is just at the top of the water. Then you can remove your turkey, pour out your water, leave that clip and thermometer at that distance, and then you can fill it with oil to the bottom of that probe. Okay. And now you know how much oil you need. All right. And then you want to adjust your thermometer so it's down in the oil. Okay. After you pour your water out of the pot, make sure you dry it thoroughly. You don't want to have any water in the oil. Add the oil to the height that you measured, and then connect your propane tank and turn on the burner. You're going to heat it up to 350 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and never leave the turkey fryer unattended once the burner's on. Mm -hmm. And don't allow the oil to get over 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be a fire hazard. To prepare your turkey... Dry it off and add any seasoning. You can let it set in the refrigerator for a couple of hours and then pat it dry before cooking it. When the oil is 350 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, turn off the burner. Wear protective gloves and apron and covered shoes and slowly lower the turkey into the oil. Once the turkey is in place, turn back on the burner and you want to cook at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Check the turkey by lifting it out of the oil and check the temperature of the meat. It's done when it's 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And you want to turn off the burner whenever you raise or remove the turkey because if you splash oil near the flame, it can cause a fire. Okay. When the turkey is done, turn off the burner and slowly lift the turkey out of the pot and place it on a tray or pan to drain, unless you have one of the pots that allow you to drain it over the pot. Okay. Allow it to rest breast side down and legs up for 20 minutes and leave it uncovered for a crisp skin. Okay. But follow the instructions for your turkey fryer. Right. How long does it take to heat the oil to 375? Usually 30 to 60 minutes, depending on the size of your pot and the amount of oil you have. And make sure you don't let the oil overheat because it can ignite. Okay. What temperature should the turkey be at to safely eat? The National Turkey Federation says check the meat temperature in three places. The thickest part of the breast, the wing, and the thigh. Make sure you're lifting the turkey out of the pot to test it. Butterball recommends the thigh should be 180 degrees Fahrenheit, the breast 170 degrees Fahrenheit, and the stuffing 165 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to insert the thermometer fully into the thickest area and don't touch any bone. Okay. The CDC says the internal temperature of the turkey should be at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. What are some top-rated meat thermometer companies? Thermoworks. It's T-H-E-R-M-O, capital W-O-R-K-S, OXO Good Grips, that's O-X-O, and Lava Tools, L-A-V-A-T-O-O-L-S, and Instant Read Thermometers, Take five to ten seconds to test the meat. Cool. How do you clean a turkey fryer after you use it? A couple manuals I read said to clean the cooking pot and the turkey holder with a mild dishwashing liquid detergent and a nylon cleaning pad. But check the care recommendations for your model. Okay. What are some safety tips for using a turkey fryer? Turn off the burner whenever you're filling the pot with oil, lowering the turkey into the pot, and removing the turkey. And check the oil thermometer routinely before each use. You never want to overheat the oil. And you can check it by boiling water and then inserting the thermometer into the water. When it's boiling, it should be 212 degrees Fahrenheit, hmm. roughly, depending on your elevation. Right. What a cool test, huh? So Simple. Cool. <laughs> Orient the tank and fryer for the wind direction. The wind should be blowing to keep the flame and the heat away from the hose. Check the minimum distance between the tank and the burner in your manual. 24 inches away is common. Okay. Never fill the oil past the max fill line on the pot, but don't depend on the line. It could be overfilled for a large turkey. 
You want to use water first to determine the height of how much oil you need. Okay. Don't use the turkey fryer in rain or snow. Water can make the hot oil splatter. Only use the turkey fryer outside and allow the oil to cool to 100 degrees Fahrenheit or less before you move your pot. If the oil is over 400 degrees Fahrenheit or it's smoking, turn off the burner and allow it to cool off to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm. If the outdoor temperature is below freezing, it can take much longer to cook, or the oil may not be able to reach 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Bummer. Check the specifications when shopping or cooking for the maximum turkey weight. How much oil would you need? You're going to need three to five gallons of oil, depending on the size of the pot and your turkey size. That's a lot. Yeah. Hmm. The National Fire Protection Association says a turkey has to be fully thawed and dry before lowering it into hot oil. Any water or ice will turn into steam immediately and can spray hot oil, which can catch on fire from the burner, potentially creating a fireball. Mm. Water expands about 1,700 times its volume as it turns into steam, so it can really spray the oil. And that's why it's so important to turn off the burner before you raise or lower a turkey into the pot. Right. Never try to put out an oil fire with water. It will cause the oil to splatter and spread the fire. Okay. Use a Class B fire extinguisher to put out an oil fire. Most home fire extinguishers are rated ABC. A is for wood, paper, plastic, cloth, and other flammable material. B is for oil, grease, and other flammable liquids. C is for electrical fires. Only use the turkey fryer outside, not in a garage, a shed, or any enclosed structure. The U.S. Fire Administration says only use a fryer on a sturdy, level surface. Keep the fryer at least 10 feet from your home or other structures like a wood deck. Don't put the fryer under overhangs or low-hanging branches, especially in fall with dead leaves on the branches. Right. Always use long protective gloves or mitts when you're moving the turkey in and out of the pot. Make sure you're keeping kids at least three feet away from a turkey fryer. Yeah. Some cooks say do not brine a turkey that's going into a turkey fryer. So brining is soaking a turkey in salty water for a few hours. Hmm. The meat absorbs a lot of moisture, which can convert the water into steam and tear apart the meat, or that extra water can cause the oil to boil over. Uh. But saying that, some cooks recommend brining the turkey to retain more moisture and flavor. One chef recommended if you do plan on brining, pull it out of the brine at least an hour before you fry it and allow it to drain, and then pat the outside of the turkey dry with paper towels. Okay. What are some top-rated turkey fryer companies? Bayou Classic. It's B-A-Y-O-U. King Cooker. It's K I N G. Capital K O O K E R, Barton, B A R T O N, Creole Feast. It's C R E O L E, capital F E A S T, and Loco, L O C O. Cool. How long does it take to deep fry a turkey compared to cooking it in the oven? Butterball says cook a turkey in the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And a 10 to 18 pound turkey without stuffing is going to take three to three and a half hours. With stuffing, it's going to take three and a half to four and a half hours. Hmm. A deep fryer takes about three and a half minutes per pound. So a 10 pound turkey would take around 35 minutes, an 18 pound turkey around 63 minutes. Wow. Yeah, cool. so pretty quick. How long can you keep turkey in the refrigerator for leftovers? The USDA recommends eating cooked turkey within four days, keep it at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, and it can be frozen up to four months. Okay. And put the turkey leftovers in the fridge within two hours of cooking it. All right. Are turkey fryers dangerous? According to the National Fire Protection Association, turkey fryers cause an average of five deaths, 60 injuries, and over $15 million in property damage a year. Wow. They recommend always monitoring the turkey fryer when it's on. Overheated oil can cause a fire, and if they aren't set up properly, they can tip over, causing a fire or injuries. Hmm. And in fact, UL has decided not to certify any turkey fryers as safe 
because of increasing numbers of fires and burn injuries. Well, how much propane will you use when using a turkey fryer? So a common burner I saw was 50,000 BTUs. Okay. Feral Gas says a 20-pound propane tank has 430,000 BTUs of propane. So if you have a 50,000 BTU burner at the max output, it should last about eight and a half hours. (laughs) But that's going to vary with outdoor temperature, the burner efficiency, and the propane pressure. Okay. Do you have anything else to add? Make sure you never leave your turkey fryer unattended. Have a fire extinguisher ready whenever you're using it and place it on a level surface. And you wouldn't want to place it on a concrete or an asphalt driveway because oil can stain it. Right. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please give us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, Books 1 through 17 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please give us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com, and you can follow us on Instagram, Fix It Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.